History, brought to you by Forest Hills Cemetery. We're standing in what is the Stone Fort area. About a block behind us is the Stone Fort Inn. This was at one time about a 50 foot tall limestone outcropping in the middle of downtown. It was used as a quarry for a lot of years. And, and when the railroad came through here at the turn of the century, the, prop, the property became profitable and they, they tore this hill down. But uh, it was called the Stone Fort because during the Civil War, some of the stones were used to put a fort at the toe of the hill to defend the city. And, and everybody referred to that fort as the Stone Fort. And the name kind of caught on. And so even though there's no trace of the hill today everyone still thinks of this area as the stone fort area and well you know the, the stone fort isn't one of the areas that people probably as tourists think of as oh i've got to go see that area but you know this is where we really have a lot of great grand larger historic buildings like the custom house municipal the municipal building where city hall is Patton towers behind me which is where wdod our first radio station the, the dynamo of dixie was on the on the rooftop of, of that building we have warehouse row that's a great turn of the century historic structure the freight depot is about a block away that's where the scott Scottsboro Boys train started out when it was leaving bound for Alabama. There's just a lot of great history, a railroad history, a lot of turn of the century history in this area. And it's really a pretty area to come survey architecture as well. Now behind us we have the Customs House. I guess briefly talk about what the Custom House is. Well this was originally built in the 1890s. It's probably one of the most beautiful buildings downtown. And it was built as a Custom House and Post Office. And this is what became our post office and our courthouse until about the 1930s when the current federal courthouse was built. Any reason why it's called the Customs House? I mean, Chattanooga is not known for international <laughs> trading. This is not an area you would think of as an international port, but in the 1890s, one of the few ways to get federal building dollars was to build a custom house. And so, so we said, one custom house, please. <laughs> and we got federal dollars to build this building. And so it was just sort of a, an interesting way to get money to build a, a, a very nice po uh, post office and courthouse. Around 1909 and 1911, uh, Coca-Cola was put on trial to determine if it was an unsafe product. The trial was called United States versus, I believe, 40 barrels and 20 kegs of Coca-Cola. And, and, you know, a lot of people know the old story about was it cocaine in, in Coke that they were looking for. And it was an unsafe product, but it was not cocaine. They were looking at caffeine. And so the trial was held here, and ultimately, after the result of this whole trial, it was found that Coca-Cola was not unsafe and could be could be enjoyed. And as, as I always tell people, if if this trial had gone the other way, we'd all be drinking Pepsi, and, and that's not a world any of us want to live in. So in the 1930s, the New Deal era, what is now the Joel Solomon Federal Building was built. It still is our downtown post office and federal courthouse today. In the 1960s, it was the site of one of the, the biggest trials that ever saw Chattanooga was uh, United States versus James Riddle. Hoffa. It was Jimmy Hoffa trial where Jimmy Hoffa was put on trial for jury tampering. And actually behind me is the is the Patton Towers, which at the time was the Hotel Patton, and that's where Jimmy Hoffa stayed. And there are all of these great stories about Hoffa's people surveilling the government, the government surveilling and wiretapping Hoffa, surprise witnesses, testimony about voodoo. And in the end, in this crazy six-week trial, Jimmy Hoffa was convicted of jury tampering. And he was sent to prison and, and lost his, his stranglehold on the Teamsters Union. And you can almost really draw a straight line from that conviction to his disappearance in 1975, about a decade later. And so really his, his downfall began here in, in, in this courtroom in Chattanooga, Tennessee. Why did you want to write the book on it? <laughs> Well, you know, if you grow up in Chattanooga, you, you've got to love history. And, and, and I love Chattanooga history. And, you know, you go to other places and you say, gosh, you know, Chattanooga history is just as interesting as, as these other places. But nobody had ever really written a book showing you where it all was. So I said to my wife, I'll, I'll knock this out in about three weeks. Three years later, I was done. And, um, and it's just a great, you know, it's, 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 a, it's a great thing to, to become interested in as someone who lives here or visits here, just to get your, your head around all the wonderful, deep history that happened where we're standing. And once again, we thank Mari for uh, taking time to talk with us. Of course, the book that he's referring to is about 16, 17 different walking tours throughout downtown Chattanooga. We'll put a link to where you can find his book on our website, newsgen9.com.